All right, folks, welcome to the Grab the Map podcast, where we don't just look at it, we grab the map. I'm John Crutchfield. I host a podcast every week, and today we're going to talk about when relationships break down. That's right, real estate investing, when relationships break down. Hopefully, the, these podcasts have been helpful to you. Um, if you want to reach out to me, I answer every single email that goes to grab the map at gmail.com. That's grab the map at gmail.com. So email me. I'd love to talk to you. Um, something else we've been doing on Mondays, every Monday at 6 p.m. Central Time, you can log in to a mastermind group. Uh, this is a group of, you know, people that are in the business. They're doing deals. They're actively getting stuff done. It's free, to total at no cost. And you're able to log in and talk to them, uh, maybe share your ideas. Uh, maybe you're just getting started and you want to be around some people that hold you accountable. Uh, just uh, find us on Facebook at Grab the Map and uh, find that group. Connect with us on Mondays. Uh, hopefully it will be helpful to you. Um, so today, talking about re relationships break down in real estate investing. I, th I thought I'd talk about this for a moment because uh real estate investing is a long-term initiative it, it's not a fly-by-night game if you're looking to get rich quick then you need to find another business there's certainly lots of opportunities to grow and succeed um but they're they're not going to happen overnight you're going to have to maintain some relationships you're going to have to uh, cultivate some relationships and uh, you're going to have to fix some relationships when they break down and so I thought about a couple of stories I could share with you all um, because um, I've had relationships break down. Relationships break down all the time. I'm actually in the middle of one that's breaking down right now. And so I was thinking about how to develop a, uh, a system or, or maybe a response that could help relationships be restored. The, the reality is this, okay? You need other people to succeed. Right. You will not succeed all by yourself, no matter how much, you know, you want to be independent and you want to accomplish things alone. OK, you'll need a realtor if you need one. Right. You'll need an attorney to close your documents. You'll need some bankers to loan you money. Uh, you'll need some contractors to help you get the work done. You'll need uh, your spouse to be supportive or your children to be OK. Right. You'll need people to be a team around you to help move you forward. And sometimes relationships will break down that will get in your way. And I'm going to say they're going to get in your way because if you don't recognize that the relationship being broken down will get in your way, uh, things will come back to haunt you and they'll often come back to haunt you at the worst time. What do you mean, right? What do you mean? There are some people who go through life and business thinking that they can just mess over people, cheat people. Uh, they can do things wrong, right? Break down relationships. Oh, I, who cares what they think about me? Oh, who cares what they say about me? And they think, oh, I can just move on to another contractor. I could just move to another attorney. I can just move on to, you know, another banker. I could just move on to another lender or another a person that can get, I can get business done. I don't, it doesn't matter who I piss off. Right. And what we need to think about is the fact that when these relationships break down, they could have long lasting consequences. So what do you mean long lasting consequences? Well, I'll set this up in, in a format today where we ask three questions. Okay. Here are the three questions. Number one, I need to, you to ask, when relationships break down, what do they cost you? Okay, what do they cost you? And I'll give you a few seconds to think about that question. All right, I think you're thinking about this. Number one, you might be thinking, uh, well, it doesn't cost me anything. If I lose a, 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 an attorney, there's lots of attorneys out here looking for uh work um if i lose a contractor there's lots of contractors out here looking for work you know if i if i lose this person or that person i can replace them easily and the fact is that you might be able to replace them but you might not 
You see, everybody has a unique skill set that they bring to the table. And one day you might need the skill set of the person that you have a relationship breakdown with. That's right. You know, what do they say? Uh, you might not want to burn a bridge because you may have to cross it again. You ever thought about that? So the question here is, what does it cost you when you lose that banker that had your back, right? When you lose that contractor that did things without you having to ask them to, what does it cost you, right? You, you lose things that you might not realize. Uh, maybe you lose somebody that was bird dogging deals for you and helping you find deals. Maybe you lose somebody that was letting you make your payment a little bit late so that you could grow a business, right? But you can't really do that anymore when you change bankers or you change uh, change uh, lenders in that case. Maybe you had somebody who um, overlooked certain things that you did wrong or mistakes that you made. What does it cost you when that relationship breaks down? What about time, right? What about the time that it takes to replace a contractor? What, is, what about the time that it takes to replace a banker. You gotta now go out and find a new employee, right? You gotta find a new person to do the job that you had trained this other person to do. What about the time, right? These things cost you, whether you wanna admit it or not, they cost us. And when relationships break down, sometimes they can be irreplaceable, okay? So the first part of this mindset is thinking about, you know, what do you really want? What do you really want when a relationship breaks down? Uh, nine times out of 10, you're not, you know, necessarily breaking up with your spouse or your partner, a very significant intimate partner that you're going to need. Nine times out of 10, these are people that you think, oh, I can just move on, right? I can just uh, go somewhere else. I can find somebody else to do this, okay? But the reality is this, if they're serving a purpose now, they could also serve a purpose later. And this attitude requires patience. Okay, this attitude requires us to think about tomorrow before we think about this moment. Hey, case in point, uh, let's think about that that inspector that comes over to the house and he, he fails an inspection and you want to give him a piece of your mind because you know that the thing that he failed or she failed was no, not that big of a deal. What do you do? You go off on them, you tell them your piece of your mind, or do you think about the fact that you might be dealing with this inspector for years to come? That's right. You might be dealing with an inspector for a while, right? So think about when this relationships break down, how things could get difficult for you. Maybe instead of uh, things going quickly on your inspections, now they, they just crawl to a halt and every inspection becomes a problem, right? Maybe um, this is something that goes, goes on for quite some time when you thought, hey, I'm just changing inspectors. I'm gonna request a change with the city, but they've all talked and now this is costing you time, which we know is costing you money on some of your projects. What does it cost you when these relationships break down? There are lots of unintended consequences. People talk, all right? And just like people talk about good things and the times that you helped them and the times that you made them money, the times that you uh, helped them grow, they talk about the times that you messed up. You know, that time that you you told that person that you didn't need them and you'd never ever need them again, they told somebody else about that interaction. Hey, when you dealt with John, uh, when, when I dealt with John, John was ugly to me, he was nasty. And now that person, you know, may view you differently based on the interaction that they never had, right? So when relationships break down, they could cost you long term and people could have a view of you that you never presented to them, but they heard about from somebody else. Number two, what does it take to repair relationship breakdowns? I think this is something that we have to start from by thinking, hey, we do need to repair these things. You don't need to run your business, your real estate business, whatever other kind of business with relationships constantly in limbo and broke down and you leaving 
uh, relationships broken all along the path of your journey, right? Oh, I pissed off this this attorney. I made this banker upset. I made this kind. I didn't pay this contractor. I didn't uh, do what I said I was going to do with this client. I didn't return this phone call, right? This is very important. Relationships that are broke down need to be repaired. And you might say, well, uh, I don't want to fix it. I don't care. I could care less what that person thinks. And sometimes that needs to be true, right? Sometimes you do need to leave a relationship alone. You need to move on. You need to have uh, that person no longer be a part of your network, a part of your space. But the reality is that you need to leave it in a place where you can return if you have to. All right. That means that, you know, if you said the wrong thing, you need to apologize. Right. If you uh, did something, mis if you did the wrong thing or you said the wrong thing or you uh, handled something the wrong way, you want to reflect on that and you want to fix that case in point. Hey, you know, you might have somebody that you say, I never want to work with this person again. And you told them, I'll never, ever work with you again. I can't stand you. I hate your guts. All right. Well, we need to agree that that's not the way that you want to handle this stuff. All right. You need to tell that person, hey, look, I got uh, too frustrated. Um, I, I hate that I said that to you. It wasn't how I wanted to handle things. And um, this is how I really felt about it. But hey, I don't want to leave things in a bad place. That might be all you need to do. I'm not saying that you need to use them ever again, but if you have to, the person will remember that apology. Okay. Maybe um, you need to think about the humility that this requires, right? When a relationship is broke down, it's not always the other person's fault. Hey, Sometimes you didn't pay the person what you told them you would pay them. Sometimes you didn't make the, the deadline that you said you would make. Sometimes your attitude was bad. Sometimes your outlook was wrong. Sometimes you're, you got too gossipy. Sometimes you didn't follow through with what you said. Okay. And oftentimes when relationships break down, there's a miscommunication. That's your fault. And when things are our fault, we need to be humble and admit that those things are our fault. This is a big part of repairing relationships when they break down. So think about it. Hey, look, maybe there's this person that you've really been wanting to get things back right with. Start with thinking about what you could have done differently to repair the relationship. Why does this matter? Why does this matter? We're talking about real estate. We're talking about investing. Well, because if people don't want to deal with you, it's going to make it a lot harder for you to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. If you walk into the bank or if you send an email or if you um, call a contractor and they see your number and they can't stand when they see your number or they can't stand when they see you walking in, it's going to be a lot harder for you to get business done. That's why this matters. OK, when relationships break down, it needs to be your utmost concern try to fix that thing and get that thing back. Maybe it won't be perfect, but it will be stable enough where you can keep getting business done. All right. Think about this as well. Who loses and who wins most of the time, right? When a relationship breaks down, especially in real estate investing, a lot of times the, the, the winner short term is not the winner long term, right? So if I tell you what I really think about you right now and you never do business with me again, in the long term, I may end up losing, right? If there's somebody that I just don't gel with or I just want to give all the, give all of my you know ugliest to right now, in the short term, it feels real good. And I can tell, tell people, hey, look, I told him and he ain't going to never talk to me like that again. But, you know, when there's a snow day, and you've got five water leaks at five different properties and you can't call the contractor because, hey, look, I told him off last time. He did pretty good work, but I can't call him back because I had an attitude with him. Who loses? Right. And a lot of times our long term goal would be complemented by a short term loss. What does that mean? Right. 
sometimes we've got to let the relationship stay where it is, right? And not break it down so that later we can utilize that relationship to further our goals, right? Um, thinking about employees, right? Thinking about sometimes where, you know, they might make a mistake or they might not accomplish something that they agreed to accomplish by a certain deadline, right? We've got a choice a lot of times, right? As as managers, we've got a choice as to whether to, you know, bring down the hammer, uh, say what we need to say, insult them. We've got all these negative choices that would have uh, long term disappointing consequences. And who loses if you've got to train another employee, right? Who loses if you've got to find another contractor? Who loses if you got to find another bank, right? So pause. Don't send the email, right? Don't make the phone call right then. Think about a strategic way to um, repair that relationship, right? Think about a humble way to admit your side of what's wrong and then make a decision that allows the relationship to continue in the long term. Again, somebody's tuning this out because they're saying, oh, he's not talking about real estate today. Hey, look, I, I, again, now I told you, if the wholesaler doesn't like you because you've told them you're going to buy something and you change your mind, that's your fault. You need to fix that, right? If 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 the realtor doesn't want to pick up the phone because you've had her show you 20 houses and you've never bought one, that's your fault, right? If, you know, somebody doesn't want to do business with you because they've heard you talking about how you screwed somebody else over, right? That's your fault. And so this is an important uh, concept to think about when we're thinking about when relationships break down, we've got some possibilities of how we can fix them. If we think about what they cost us, if we think about what it really takes to repair uh, these relationships and who wins and who loses. This is John Crutchfield. I'd love to hear from you at grabthemap at gmail.com. Uh, this is grab the map where we don't just look at it. We grab the map.